Meron kayo yung kwento na nagtagpok sa dalawang magkaibigan na si Juan at saka si Pedro. Uh, yung si Juan at saka si Pedro ay mahilig, ano, mahilig mag-treasure hunt uh, sa kabundukan. Ngayon, nalaman nila na may nadiscover si Tang Cueva na doon na nakakita sila ng, ano, ng ginto. In fact, napakabigyan ko yung nakuhan ng ginto, ilugay nila sa sako, pero hindi nila nagpabuhat. So, sinang dalawa ang, ano, kung kumbaga, kaya naman buhat yung isa ka na, napakahirap pa. So, ano, excited sila kasi nakahanap sila ng ginto at alam nila, pinaisip nila kung gagawin nila, bibigyan ng bahay, sabi ni Pedro. Tapos sabi ng isa, hindi, bibigyan nila ka ng kotse, yung mamahaling kotse na rin. Ito ba, sa paglalakad nila, bigla na lang nakalisod yung isa, si Pedro. Kaya, kung makita nila, napinay pala siya. So, hindi na siya makalakad mo. So, after a few hours, nakarating si si Juan to sa bayan. Ano siya makaibigyan mo? At ano yung kasama mo si Pedro? Sabi niya, ah, wala, iniwanan ko. Iniwanan mo? Oo. Oh, bakit naniwanan? Kasi itong ginto, hindi ninanakap. Ay, hindi ninanakap siya, hindi. <laughs> so in terms of priorities, ganyan tayo, no? Dahil tayo, meron tayong mga inisip parati, nag-decision tayo, kung ano ang mas makalaga sa buhay. At yung decision natin yun ay depende kung ano yung tinatawag natin priority. Uh, so, ano man yung mahalaga sa atin, yun ang parati natin iniisip na inuuna. Okay? May mga bagay na sa araw-araw natin ginagawa na hindi na natin iniisip na prioridad natin yun. Kaya yung choices natin, yung pag-decision automatic. For example, pag tayo ay gumising sa umaga, alam na natin na tayo kakain. Hindi na tayo nagdi-decision kung kakain ba tayo o hindi, di ba? Alam natin kakain na tayo. So, over time, yung mga maliliit na decision na yan ay nagiging automatic. Papasok tayo sa school. Uh, anong sasakyan natin? Uh, Balik, pagliligo, and all that. Okay? So, ito yung mga bagay na hindi na natin iniisip. Decided na tayo kung ba Automatic na yan. Kaya na, may mga bagay-bagay din sa buhay na medyo kailangan ng bigyan ng pansin kung tayo ay nagdi-desisyon. Kung alin yung mas mahalaga, kung alin yung mas uunahin natin. Halimbawa, sinong mapapangasawa? Hindi uh, yan automatic eh. Ay talagang iniway mo. Ikilatis mo talaga kung kayo yung babae, kung marami ka nang nabibigaw. Diba? Swerte ka kasi marami ka nabibigaw. Hindi na pipilihan ka. No? Uh, or maswerte yung hindi na walang pinagpipilihan. <laughs> kasi, isa lang eh. Kunin mo na, di ba? So, may mga ganyan. Yung, yung iba naman, uh, kung anong papasok ang trabaho. Kung ano yung kukunin na well, court course sa kolehyo. So, yung mga bagay na lahat tayo ay iisip natin at yung lahat ng ating desisyon ay priority o priority ay nanggagaling sa ating tinatawag natin core values. Ano ba yung mahalaga sa iyo bilang isang tao? So ngayong araw na to ay ating tatalakayin ang isang kwento sa Biblia tungkol sa dalawang magkapatid, okay? mga babae ito. At itong, itong istorya na to ay nagtuturo sa atin kung ano yung bilang, isang, bilang mga kristyano, ang yung dapat natin ituring na mahalaga, na dapat natin unahin, dapat natin bigyan pansin uh, kaysa ibang mga bagay. Sapagkat itong bagay na to ay may tinatawag natin uh, eternal significance. Okay? Yung decision na to ay may kinalaman sa ating uh, future, not just here, pero sa uh, in the kingdom of God. So, ang ating istorya po ay sa Luke 10. Luke 10 at uh, uh, 
ang pamagat po dito ay ang the Christian priority. Ito po ay napaka popular na kwento. Kung alam niyo po yung kwento na yan. Anyway, uh, before we go to that, bilang ko lang po kayo ng konting background because bago natin basahin yung kwento. Sa New Testament po, or dun sa, uh, sa, sa, uh, dun sa kultura ng mga Jews ng time na ni Cristo or yung New Testament, nung sinulat ni Luke po ito, ang mga babae ay hindi ganun uh, kataas ang status po nila sa society. Okay? Ang society po noon ay male-centered. O kung sabihin na natin, male-dominated. So, hindi po nakakapagtaka na si Jesus, halimbawa, ang makinuha niya ay ang disipulos niya ay mga lalaki, sa pagkat ganun po yung tradisyon. Okay? Ganun po talaga ang mga lalaki ang nag-aaral, mga lalaki ang mas binibigyan ng mga uh, resources. However, kasi sa istorya natin tatalakay ngayon, ang story sa mga babae naman. So, medyo kakaiba nga. Okay? At uh, atin na pong babasahin. Let's go to Luke 10, starting with verse 38. Okay? At ito po ay tungkol sa magkapatid na si Martha at si Mary. Uh, Martha at si Mary. Alam niyo na po marahil ito, no? So anyway, let's go through it and hopefully uh, may mapupulot po tayo ng iba pang mga aral tungkol sa dalawang magkapatid na ito as, as they encounter Jesus Christ. It says here, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. So, yung ministry po ni Jesus ay pumunta po sila sa mga houses, pumunta po sila ibang mga syudad, ibang cities, at ito po yung sinasabi dito sa first part of verse 38 na they were on their way. They were going from places. They were going about their business. <coughs> and then he came to a village. Uh, notice na Jesus and his disciples ang tinutukoy niya, di ba? Pero kung titignan na ho natin, pagkatapos ko nung phrase na yun, he, yung phrase na yun, he, puro uh, singular, sing, singular po na ang ginamit. So he, came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her door to him. So, ang um, concentration na instead of the disciples with Jesus Christ, ay nakikita mo natin, the story as wrote, uh, as Luke wrote it, ay parang focus on Jesus Christ alone. So, it could be na it was just Jesus Christ who was invited in and so, siya lang ang tinutupay dito. Kung baga yung mga disciples, although part po sila ng ministry ni Jesus, sa instance na to, parang hindi na po sila nilagay sa eksena ni Luke. Okay? So, ang maagalit po natin isipin, pwede nung nagtatravel sila, bigla na lang nalaman ni Martha, o oh, nag-check pala si Jesus, napunta siya sa atin, no? sa ating lugar. So, parang bigla niya siguro naisip, ano kaya pag yayayari ko siya kung kumain sa atin dito, pinakausap niya si Mary, you know? ano kaya? So, there is also the possibility na itong invitation ni Martha as she opened her home to him was something that is spontaneous. Yung kapag yung baga bigla na nalang na naisipan, no? kasi nandyan. Hindi kasi katulad ng technology natin ngayon na parang alam mo na, Parating na si Jesus, may nag-detect sa'yo, may mga ganyan, no? May pupunta siya yung next week, email pa lang, sa Facebook pa lang. Nakala wala yung mga ganyan, no? So, parang bigla na lang, siguro na, nandiyan at tatandong si Martha, nakita niya sa Jesus, tsaka sabi niya, uh, ano kaya? No? Pwede yung ba kayong pumunta po sa amin at uh, ako po ay magsaserve ng iyong pagkain. So, so she opened her uh, door to Jesus as his special guest. So, si Jesus po ay kanyang bisita. Okay? 
Now let's go now to uh, by the way, yung, ano pala, yung village na yan is most likely Bethany, which is just a few uh, miles or kilometers uh, to Jerusalem. So it is possible that Jesus actually was going to Jerusalem. Anyway, let's now go to verse 39. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. So... Who was the one who invited Jesus? Martha. It was Martha. Okay. So when Jesus came in, of course, hindi masyado Italiano pagkakapwento dito. But in short, what happened was Mary, her sister, the sister of Martha, sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. So nakikinig ko siya. So Ang, ang indication po rito ng at the Lord's feet, listening at the Lord's feet, is a kind of a phrase often used uh, to show a kind of a teacher-student relationship. But uh, si Mary Hudito was like a disciple as somebody who learned from the Master, learned from a rabbi, and she sat there as a learner, as a disciple, in that posture. Okay? Very significant po yung at the Lord's feet. Kasi parang it's a, it's a picture or a posture of, of wanting to learn, of being under somebody, of wanting, of wanting to take in as much as possible of the teachings of Jesus. And of course, it is seen here that she's obviously very attentive to what uh, Jesus was saying. Okay, so that's the picture. Now let's go to our next verse. But Martha, okay, medyo kakaiba ko yung pag-uitisa ng verse 40, okay? But Martha, so ano yung sabihin? Here was Martha, invited Jesus, and Mary sat there, but Martha, something's about to happen. Okay? Yung but kasi dito is strikingly noticeable when you read the story. Uh, hindi niyo po yan makakaligtaan na may pinaparamdam dyan. Si Luke. Okay? Next uh, slide. You can see that. But Martha was what? Distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. So, there was a big contrast between what Mary was doing and what Martha was doing. Okay? Makikita ko natin sa storya na walang masyadong binagawa si Mary. In fact, nakaumulang po siya at nakikinig. Wala po siyang binagawa. Kumbaga, the way Martha would look at it. So, but Martha was distracted. Okay? Napakaraming ginagawa si Mary, si Martha. Hindi lang mo distracted by the preparations, by all the preparations. So, ano kaya yung all of the preparations dyan? Dami! Okay? Well, hindi lang siguro isang meal ang pinibigare ni Martha. It could be a series of you know, courses, kumbaga, kung sa modern uh, life now, you know, we have a long appetizer, meron kung ano-ano, and it probably is, kung, kung sa atin, meron tayo mga five, seven course meals, di ba? Iba pa yung ibibinom, iba pa yung wine, iba pa yung juice, whatever you have. And so Martha was just into all of that. A lot of the preparations are going on. And yun yung parang sinasabi mo rito sa, sa kwento, ano? Ano mo yung ibig sabihin ng distracted? It simply means that Martha um, has lost focus of what is important or what ought to be done. Or what is more important to be done. She is unable to concentrate. Okay? Sa dami na ginagawa, 
Alam mo yun, kung ang dami dami yung ginagawa, kahit yung ginagawa mo mismo, ay hindi mo na nagagawa ng maayos. Kasi sa dami nga, no? So that is like the mind, mindset of Martha. She is unable to concentrate because her mind is so full of things to do. Now, we can identify with that, right? We have those kinds of experience. Sa Filipino, tinatawag mo natin yan na uh, nagugulo, nagulo, nakakabala, nagagambala, or natutorete. Diba? Yan yan, yun yung mga salita natin. Uh, pero, I think one, one way to look at that word, distracted, is it simply means like a train that somehow gets off track. Okay? Uh, ito yung daanan yan, and all of a sudden it loses its footing, it, the wheels uh, lose their hold on the rails, and it just goes off the rail. Okay? It means to be drawn away. Okay? Pero the word to be drawn away, meaning to say something is pulling Martha away from something. So that's, that's simply what the word distract means. Medyo magandang pag-aralan mo yung mga salita ganyan kasi kung isa na iisip natin, kung na, ano, kaya pala yung isipin yun, know, to be drawn away. Okay? Hindi lang yung napakarami yung iniisip, pero tumulo, parang ano, uh, naiiba ang inyong landas. So why is Martha distracted? Sabi ko natin, because of all the preparations. So, talagang si Martha ko ay very, very busy. Super busy. Okay? Super busy siya. Imagine yung lago siya. Nag-prepare sa kitchen. Goes here, goes there. You know? Yung sana ito, yung sana yun. And then, she's all over. Okay? And, medyo frantic na siya. May ito say. Hindi na siya, parang, alam niyo yun, yung pag, pag, pag tinitig na mo siguro si Martha, parang ka nanonood ng tennis uh, competition na yung mula kung saan sa nagpupat siya. Something like that, na hindi mo nakukuha ko. Ano ba talaga yung ginagawa niya? But anyway, that's, that's what we said. So, for Martha, okay, for Martha, we can understand her sense of urgency. Okay? First of all, she was the one who invited Jesus. Then, tama lang na mag-prepare siya ng special meal because he's a special person. She, he, Jesus is known to be uh, a miracle worker. So, as the host, I think it was just proper for Martha to give her best effort. Diba? Tama lang naman yun eh. Wala namang... Masama, wala namang kakaiba yun. Kung tayo naman po ay bibisita ay nang napaka-special na, na panahulit. Anong gagawin mo natin sa bahay? Ba, magagantayin natin, bilinisin natin lahat, you know? Lahat ng mga ubiertos natin na hindi kayo pa 30 years na tayo kinasal na natas, di ba? Mga ganun klaseng niya lang pag uh, iintindi. And of course, may Martha probably want a special meal for which Jesus would remember it. But, I think, ano, tama naman yung pinagawa niya, no? But she, he wants, she wants to have the best, her standards, whatever it is. So, that is why so much preparation of the food, even the table, and all of these things had to be made. That's the way Martha looked at it. And I think we can understand if we are in her shoes that we would probably do the same. Okay? So, hindi yung kakaiba si Martha sa atin. Malagay ko kung tayo yung nasa kanyang naruroonan, exactly ganun din ang gagawin natin. So why did she do, so what did she do as she begins to realize that she can't do it all? Actually, all of a sudden, si Martha po ay hindi na niya magampan at ang dapat niya gawin. Okay? Makikita po natin dito sa next verse. Uh, she came to him and asked, okay, this is now Martha, unable to do what she thinks she ought to be doing. 
And then what did she do? She approached Jesus. So remember, Jesus was there sitting, and Mary was at her feet. They were having a conversation. Maybe Mary is asking lots of questions, maybe. Or I don't know how the interaction went, but it is more like Mary is really listening. And I don't think about when Mary, he went to Jesus, him. Okay? Why did why? Why did you do why did you do that? Okay, let's just continue with the story. Ah, to palangyare. Huh? May sinabi siya kay Jesus. Ano sinabi niya kay Jesus? Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by himself? Tell her to help me. Nakikita niyo po ba din yung exclamation mark? Okay? So, ano nangyari dito? I think, Si, Mary, si Martha po ay lahat ng plano niya ay nagkakag at nagkakagulo-gulo at hindi na niya kaya mag-isa ang mag-prepare ng meal na gusto niya. Hindi na niya kaya gawin yung nais niya magawa. And she became very, very frustrated. Okay? Because if she can't do it, there won't be a need for her to go and approach Jesus to tell Martha something. Diba? Pero itong very interesting po sa statement na yan. First, I want to see these three things from that uh, statement alone. Quoted yan, ha? Hindi, kumbaga, yan yung word for word the way uh, Luke wrote it. Lord, don't you care that my sister expect me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Number one that I want to say, notice, Martha imputes motive on Jesus that he does not care. Makikita po ba natin? Don't you care? She also imputes motive on Mary that she has abandoned Martha to, to do all the work. My sister has left me to do the work by himself. Okay. So, yun yung motive. So, nakikita po natin ang bang state of mind ni Martha. All of a sudden, you know, she was, she invited Jesus and then all of a sudden, ito na yung pananita niya. Kung tayo po ay nasa lugar ni Mary, ay Martha, pag may pumasok na bisita ang sabihin mo natin, diba? ay tuloy po kayo. Ako napaka-saya naman na kayo po ay very pinanglakan po yung aming bita. Siya po 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 ba ito sa aming tahanan, diba? Kayo ay nagkagalak, natutuwa. At lahat ng amenities na kayo natin bigay ay bibigay po natin. Pero nandito na sa point na ito, nag-iba na, okay? So, so we're then uh, imputing of motives. Another, Martha orders Jesus to tell Mary to help her. What? She orders Jesus. She has turned from a sweet, welcoming host to a somewhat a very angry commanding general. Number three, Martha used the title Lord. Diba? Binabi niya Lord. Ano yung sabi ng Lord? Panginoon. Okay? Or boss. Master. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng Lord. Ironically, she did not treat Jesus as her Lord or Master. That's not the way she has treated Jesus. In fact, although ginamit na yung salitang Lord, ang pagtrato po na kay Jesus ay isang alipi. Okay? May utusan lang. So makikita po natin din sa next slide na ito yung, ano, parang ito ay drawing or painting 
Alright, uh, we begin our time with a quantum you know, picture of what might be happening. Of course, as I have a picture of any of my disciples, uh, that was, so I think that, well, I will say, extend to you, my disciples, uh, the way Luke related the story. And uh, Mary, well, Martha was there, and then frustrated and everything. She can't finish the work of preparation. And all of a sudden, she has changed. I am. Has that ever happened to us? Starting our day, well mannered, we're so happy, we're so happy. Something happens during our day, and all of a sudden, we change from a very gentle person to a very mean person. Okay, so that's what the contest, that's what the but is all about. So we see a conflicted Martha. It is because she's not, is it because that she's not being noticed? Okay? Or recognized for all the hard work that she's doing? Did she feel suddenly ignored? Did she mahalaga kay Jesus? And therefore, asaktan siya? Then who kaya nangyari kay Martha? Sa tingin ko, Si Martha po ay hindi talaga frustrated kay Mary. Okay? In fact, it appears that she was more frustrated and, and angry with Jesus. Okay? Bakit pa niya kay Jesus? Diba? Bakit pa niya idadaan kay Jesus? Kaya rin din kapatid niya, kilala rin kapatid niya, pwede naman niya tawagin, diba? Mas, mas na, mas madaling makikita ng palagay ng loob doon sa kanyang kapatid, diba? Mary here, I think, is just a scapegoat. Okay? Or else she could have you However, Jesus sees through Martha. She got upset with Jesus, but Jesus knew that Martha was in reality upset about herself, but she was unable to do what she intended to do. She was frustrated. Yes, she, she, she said she was frustrated with Mary. But when we really look at the whole picture, we can see that Martha was actually frustrated with herself. Okay? She failed to be the perfect host that she envisioned herself to be. Nakikita na ngayon, hindi na matatapos ang kanyang pagpapara. Therefore, what? In her frustration, she got angry. Of course, she's angry inside. But acted it out, Ikana, and projected her anger on Jesus and Mary. Jesus did not take this very personally. Okay? Jesus knew that Martha had the best intentions at her, in, in her heart. She understood her. This is reflected in Jesus' just gentle response. The next slide. Martha, Martha, sabi niya, okay? Maraming beses na gusto na ang pangalan po ay ulit-ulit sa Bible. So, but this way of doing it, of calling the name, is actually a way by which Jesus calms down para huminahin po si Martha. Kasi she was really angry. You can just imagine how she looked like, no? To be able to become somebody very different all of a sudden. Jesus calls her name twice, which means it is both a call for attention, pero ang pagtawag po ng dalawang beses sa kanyang pangalan ay also a call with affection. Okay? Now, let's, we do that also. It's, it's really more of that, a kind of a gentle response that Sabi Jesus, Martha, Martha. Okay? And he continued in the next slide. You are very upset about many things, okay? 
many things. Martha is worried. It simply means that you're excessively troubled and anxious over a possible negative outcome. That's what we see. Yeah, people who are anxious are always thinking of the negative. Okay? They fear something that's going to happen, uh, something detrimental or something negative. And that's what they keep on thinking. That's what being worried is all about. So Sabi Martha said, unless I serve the best meal, Jesus won't be happy. Unless I prepare all of these things, Jesus will be disappointed. Or he would think of me as a lousy host, a lousy cook. I'm not good enough as a person. Maybe those are things that Martha is thinking. That's why she's worried. Okay? And also we see here that upset. Martha was upset. It can also be it can also mean that to be upset is to be confused or have a crowded mind. Actually, interrelated point that along yet, no? Crowded mind is similar to worry, but coupled with the emotion of anger. So, so she's unable to recognize her own emotional needs. And she's not able to control her anger. Everything just burst, burst out of her. She blamed Mary and Jesus for her failure to meet her own high expectations or high standards with a meal preparation. If Jesus was the only guest, at least in the way, again, the story was written by Luke. I say, he loved he. If Jesus was the only guest, the question is, why so much preparation? Why so much work in order to feed just one? Is it all necessary? And I think that's what Jesus is trying to tell her. But you are worried and I'm upset about many things in the next slide. But, I'm trust again, few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Take note of that. From the word many things to few one what is Jesus getting at here Jesus narrowed the need of Mary from this much to this single only okay? Jesus wants Martha to know and focus on that one important need of hers. Who was really in need here? Was Jesus really the one in need to be fed? Or was it actually Martha who is in need of something? Can you see how Jesus is playing this out? Martha invited Jesus because she wants to fill a need of Jesus to feed him, to give him a special meal, to give him rest in his house, in her house. And but here the shift is very clear that the need that Jesus uh, that Jesus believes Mary is thinking that he needs, there's only one thing that you need. What is that one important need? that Jesus wants Martha to realize. What is it? Imagine yourself being Martha, okay? So many things are happening in your life. You're so angry, you're so frustrated, you can't think straight that Jesus had to come us down, okay? And then he tells us from many to few, this one important need. What is it? What is it that Jesus wants Realize. Surprisingly, Jesus did not say. 
did not say, did not state it explicitly. If you read the story, as we will see in the next verse, Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. The story ends there. And doesn't it give us question as to what that only one is all about? Jesus did not even answer. There was no explicit, what does that mean? But implied in this statement is that whatever this is, whatever this need is, okay, it is one, it is Mary has chosen it. Whatever this need, this need is, it is better. Whatever this need is, it will not be taken away from Mary. Meaning it has eternal value. So in terms of priority, okay, this what Mary has chosen was her priority. Is better? Is a better priority? Yeah. Is a prior priority that will not be taken away from her. So to think about that. What is it? Why did just Jesus plainly say it? This is what that one need is. Well, I think because I think Martha got it. Martha understood it. Remember that this story occurred in the context of the meal time, okay? That we prepare to see, you know, see Martha. So it could be lunch, or it could also be dinner, as uh, I was saying, journey And so that's, that's probably what's happening. So I know it's, 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 it happened during a meal time. During, during a time that all of us, probably, if we were there, we're, we're all hungry. We all want to, to be doing, we all want to be eating at that particular time, either lunch or, or dinner, and even be breakfast. You know? So, that is the context of that story. If we connect Jesus' words with what he said of himself, that he is the bread from heaven, okay? And that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, then we can see plainly, as I think Martha did, that it is he himself, Jesus himself, that he wants Martha to realize as her primary need, only need, that it is him that she has to be preoccupied with at that very moment. Next slide. This is a picture of, of course, the bread and the wine, meal time. John 6, 3, the words that I spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. Martha had a good heart, okay? and Jesus brought that picture of a meal to something like this. For us now, we know we could, we could be thinking of it in terms of the Last Supper, right? The bread and the wine representing Jesus' body and blood that He gave for the forgiveness and salvation of all mankind. The analogy for Dito is that. Yung physical starvation that nakikita po ni Martha by, that can be you know, uh, matugunan ng physical na pagkain si Jesus naman sinasabi niya to gain spiritual life you need to partake of my words and that is the one that's more important we also know that Jesus said for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as, as a ransom for many. Jesus appreciated your service for the Martha. No doubt. Okay? 
silang kung kahit pong susuriin, sabi po niya, uh, marriage has chosen the better one. In other words, what you are doing, what you have chosen as your priority at this time, is good. But marriage chose the better one. Mary allowed himself to be served by Jesus. Martha wanted to serve Jesus. And there's a difference there. So let's now go to our application. We can see that in terms of that statement, we need to first of all think the story tells us we need to allow God serve us. We never think of Jesus or our own journey so much in these terms, right? We want to serve God. It's always like that. I want to do this for God. I want to do this to glorify God's name. Yeah? I want to serve because I love God. It's always for Him. That, that is Right, okay, that is good. But have we ever thought that perhaps the more important thing, just, to, just like in our story, is that we allow God to first serve and minister to us. Think of it again, you know. I look at myself and think of it again. Let's see Martha. Mary is more of an exception. So let us not resist the ministry of Jesus to us. We just need to what? Sit down, be still, and what? Know that He is God. That's Psalm 46. In fact, when you think of that verse, we be still and know that I am God. Parang sinasabi doon is, be still and you will know that I am God. It is in that action, in that posture, that attitude of wanting to be served, to, be, to sit, sit still, that we begin to know and have a relationship with God. Amazing. You don't have to do much to be served by God. God is so willing to serve us. God is more than willing to come to us and enter into our quiet time, into our solitude, into our reflection time and Bible study and prayer time. So God wants that more than that, that more than anything else. So when we have those times, you can be very, very sure that Jesus is with you. Same matter that when, we, when Martha opened her house, Jesus did not disappoint her. So we need to allow God to serve us. Secondly, next verse, we need to allow God to serve through us. Serving is absolutely essential and good for the Christian's spiritual growth. Okay? Tama lang po yan. Uh, hindi po natin binabaliwala ang pagsilbe sa iba. Hindi po natin sinasabi, hindi po mahalaga yan. May tamang lugar po yan. We also need to realize na hindi po tayo ang gumagawa. Uh, even the desire to serve does not come from us. It is God working through us. We cannot take credit for that. It has to flow in service po natin, uh, from God serving us first. We cannot offer what we do not have or what we have not received. Hindi ko tayo pwede magsilbi kung hindi ko tayo napagsilbihan ng Panginoon. First. Okay? We cannot promote what we have not experienced first. 
So our actions would naturally flow regarding po yan, base po sa ating pananampalataya at ang ating relasyon sa ating Panginoon. So, mahalag ka po yun. Yun po yung foundation that, that uh, Jesus serves us as uh, in this Yes, next slide, you can see. That we yung sabi ni Jesus okay, about foot washing. <coughs> now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. That particular ceremony that was done is not to be taken literally, okay? It is not just washing and that's it, you're done. Actually, this picture here, the Lord's, uh, the Lord's Supper, the washing of the feet of the disciples, is teaching the disciples to serve like a servant. And yes, Martha didn't know it, but she treated Jesus as a servant because she never intended it to be that way. So if Satan just mentioned those oh, among uh, churches for that day, this this ceremony is not being done anymore because the intention is actually the one that's more important. In other words, we need to serve uh, each other. And not just us, we need to go out of our church and to serve other people. Okay? That that is the that's the picture there. And for us, in the context of the story of Martha and Mary, we have to allow God to dwell in us and so that we can serve others and follow His examples. So it is important then that we must examine our motivation for serving. Ano bang dahilan kung dahilan? Kung ano, kung bakit natin ginagawa ang mga tukulin natin ang ibaba sa ating iglesia? Ano ba ang dahilan kung bakit nasa music ministry tayo? Halimbawa, ano ba talaga ang dahilan kung bakit nandito tayo sa ministry na ito, sa prison's ministry, like whatever children's ministry? Um, I think when we really look at all of these things, our primary motivation is because we are so filled with God's love as He has served us and we just want to express that to others. Okay? But if we're not careful, it is also possible that yung kailan mo natin ang ating pagsilbi is para matugunan ang ating pangangailangan. Katulad mo ng pangangailangan na kay Martha. Kung minsan, pangangailangan natin ano? Gusto natin makilala. Gusto natin sumikat. I'm not saying that's happening here, but I'm just, just sort of wanting us to start to think in those terms. Ano ba talaga ang aking hangarin sa pagsilubi? And sometimes this is difficult, you know? To look at yourself and be honest about what is your primary intention. It's sometimes hard because we're blinded. Oftentimes we are. Is it to seek the approval of others or is it to seek the approval of God? What is our main priority why we serve? Jesus did not condemn Martha for her serving, okay? But he corrected her in the manner by which she served. She forgot the very reason, the very reason why she invited uh, or she forgot the very reason why Jesus came. Okay? She forgot the very person she has tried to serve. We serve a God that has given us the ability and resources to serve others. We must not feel guilty when we wish we can do more, but we can't. Okay? We have limitations, so we should not push ourselves too much and say, I want to do this for God, I want to do this for others, I want to do this, and in fact, we don't have the resources. So we just have to be careful about that. So in conclusion, let me conclude this message now by going back to our story. Actually, it seems like the story could have had a better ending, in which we know more of what, more than just the five short verses. 
what they reveal. To me, the story po ay parang hindi kulang-kulang. No? Uh, kung titignan mo natin, babalik na po ng kapatid ng sa last verse. Sinabi niya, makibalik uh, natin na po. Yan, yan. Martha's chosen what's better will not be taken away from her. Okay? My sense of finality very strong. Pero hindi natin alam kung anong nangyari afterwards. Sinabihan po niya si Martha about this. Ano ang naging reaction po ni Martha? Ano rin naging reaction ni Mary? Parang yung kumbaga, gusto sana, you know, may kontinuing detalye pa sana, no? Pero I think God has a reason why that story ended the way it did. Luke wrote it the way he did, okay? So allow me now to speculate, okay? And extend the story a bit. This is not in the Bible text, but I'm just going to create something, some, some, something like a fill in the blanks a little bit. But I'm, I'm warning you, this is just me. I'm just using my own imagination as we try to sort of, you know, fill in the, the blanks a little bit. As to what has happened, after Jesus has said this story. And I want us all to calm down, okay? Try to imagine what that might have been like. And let's close our eyes for a moment and bow our heads, okay? Close your eyes, calm down, and allow yourself through your own imagination that you were you are right there at the scene of our story right now. Try to see yourself present in the house. Try to look at the surroundings of the house. The smell of food, the sounds probably, people talking. You see yourself in the middle of the scene, in the middle of the house. You look to your left. You see Mary, your, si your sister. Think of yourself as Martha now. You see Mary there. And you look to your right. You see Jesus. We look at his face, we look at what he's wearing. It's right there. And this point, margin yourself again as if you are Martha. And after Jesus said, Mary has chosen what is better that will not be taken away from her. As Martha, that strikes you. And you repeat again the words of Jesus to you in your mind. You hear him say again in your mind, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You think about all of the preparations you have been doing. Jesus continued, what few things are needed or indeed only one, you ask yourself, what are you trying to tell me, Lord? As we imagine that scene again, we are shocked by our own blindness. We now see that Mary has chosen indeed what is better, but will not be taken away from her. We fell, fall down on our knees, right at Jesus' feet, like our sister Mary. Or we finally understood the very creator of the universe, the real and only hope of mankind, the Lord of hosts, 
the long-awaited prophesied Messiah, the Christ, the love you God, is present in my very own house. And we feel deep inside us. What a privilege. After we have quieted down, we come to realize that our own personal Savior right in front of us smiling at us and we probably began to realize that we finally found what we truly need since we are Martha what feelings are we feeling right now What emotions we have a sense in us having? What would we like to be doing right now? What would we like to say to Jesus? In your own words, quietly, as you close your eyes, tell Jesus what's truly inside your heart. Be honest. Be completely open to Him. Understands. And he begins to touch you, to hold you, embracing you. And you can hear him whisper to you. And he says, My child, you are very special. I thank you for what you're doing for me. I appreciate when you think of me and when you prepare so much for me. And I thank you that you have opened your house to me. Remember that no matter what, I forgive you forgive your anger, I forgive your frustration, and remember just one thing, that I love you. You may now open your eyes, brethren. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.